Hi everyone, in the last video we covered off on how x-rays are produced. When you have an anode which shoots electrons, they go across an evacuated tube and hit a target. And as the electrons have crossed the tube, they've done so through an electric field and they have accelerated and gained kinetic energy. When they hit the target, they slow down. That change in energy is expressed predominantly as heat, but in um, a sufficient amount as x-rays. And it is that x-radiation, those photons of x-ray light that can be used for um, different purposes. Uh, today I'd um, uh, like to talk about the, uh, the graph of general radiation which comes out of an x-ray tube. It's got um, a common name which is breaking radiation because it is the electron slowing down. However, uh, it's known through um, the physics term Bremsstrahlung. The general graph that you'll see has an intensity on the y-axis and an energy on the x-axis. And the shape is kind of like a skew-if bell curve with some lines shooting up and they're the characteristic radiation peaks. So we'll go through that in greater detail. But what you should see there is that the graph starts at relatively low level of energy and it will increase in the energy of the photons uh, as you go across to the right. And as you go across to the right, you'll note that it also increases intensity at certain energy levels. And there's a whole range of different energies there until it gets to one particular point, which is here. This is your F max. That's the maximum frequency of X-rays that are gonna be produced. That's the maximum energy of X-ray that's gonna be produced. That comes from when an electron crosses the evacuated tube and slams into a uh, tungsten nucleus or some nucleus in the metal target and all of its kinetic energy is then transferred into an x-ray. For everything back towards the origin of the graph, you've got electrons that have slowed down but not totally stopped. And as a result, you're getting a range of different energies. The characteristic radiation peaks relate to something uh, quite interesting. If you've ever done any work with spectrometers, you'll see that when you look at a fluorescent tube and you look at um, white light, it doesn't look white. It's got specific lines of color which relate to the visible spectrum energy transitions specific to the elements within the tubes. Every element has set energy levels that electrons orbit at. Now, in the case of using a tungsten target, tungsten has in itself set energy levels. When you start firing high energy electrons at a tungsten target, every now and again, one electron will strike another in one of the lower orbits. And in doing so, it'll leave a hole in this lower orbit. Now, if there's one thing that elements uh, don't like, it's a hole created of an electron in a lower orbital when you've got electrons available at higher orbitals. So as soon as that occurs, an electron from a higher orbital in the metal element will drop and occupy that position in the lower orbital. And in doing so, that specific drop, it produces a specific amount of energy and it does this in the form of an X-ray. And what you're looking at there are some characteristic drops that occur um, with the metal target itself. So that's where those characteristic peaks come from. And those characteristic peaks align with the electron orbitals specific to the target element. If you were to change the element that is the target, the type of metal, then you would change the location of the characteristic radiation peaks, the X-ray peaks, because the orbitals have changed and therefore the energy levels have changed. So the key thing is, with any X-ray graph, the characteristic radiation peaks will always stay in the same location when it is the same target metal. I'm going to go into uh, how the intensity and the maximum frequency changes in the next few videos.